And here we go. Yay! This is Flash over at the Dork Table on this Saturday, the 1st of February, 2020. First day of the month, people. And it's the longest one because we're in leap year. Because our calendar is kept so perfectly that, well, they come up with an extra quarter of a day. Somewhere, something like that. And then they add it all together and throw it at you in February every four years. You know, just to keep you voting. Anyway, this is the Dork Table. And uh, thanks a lot, Grim, for all your stuff that you do there over at RealLibertyMedia.com to keep us yakky people with a place to yak. And for the reading entertainment tonight in the Real Liberty Media dot com chat we have for your we got the bots and bodies for you are Barman, Beetle, Grimner, Moose Girl, Kate, Anti, Asmo, Chalcedony, Circle, Hello Honey, Echelon, Java Doctor Two, Jade Dread, Meisterbrow, Prince Rob Works, Rose Vanna White, Weather Dork. Phantom CC66 Chaskara Cyborg Noodle Damn Van Meter D Dork Cakes A Mental N Siv Me Frumpy Frumpy Work Gromit J's Nines J's Kiss Nets for Art I think that's Lonnie <coughs> Pounce Ass Sack Puppet Slim Jim Flim Smartaz the Holiest Roger, and z Picks. That's the lineup for your uh, reading and writing entertainment today on the uh, RealLibertyMedia.com chat. Now, we had made contact earlier with the one and only Vince Easley of UCY and other sites fame, you know. And uh, anyway, what happened is, since the last time I was on Radio Tuesday, I found out Vinny had actually got ill and had to be hospitalized and procedured and stuck and needled. And now they got him on pain meds, but well, there you go. But, uh, he was saying that they're going to keep him a little bit longer for those of you who listen to this, but haven't heard about him. Uh, he's got some kind of cat scan coming up on Monday. So, I don't know. He's kind of confusing when he writes because, of course, he's Vinny. But, eh, I don't know what to make of the whole thing just yet. But that's what I know as far as I've read. So, cross your fingers that the test is negative on Monday and they can just kick his redneck ass the hell out of the hospital and he can go get better and uh, move on to better things out in Arizona or Nevada this year. He's going to Nevada. Yeah, that was the last thing I read. Is uh, he still got plans of being in Nevada next month? So, sending out the old good vibrations to my buddy Benny, and uh, to get on with the show tonight's episode of the Dork Table. I gave it a title. Let me see where I put the title so I can read it to you. Uh, I found this really interesting link. I'm gonna post it in the Real Liberty Media dot com chat. It's a big old huge PDF file. So you guys probably won't really be too interested to open this. But I'm going to put it in here anyway. <clears throat> and what it is, is uh, Lysander Spooner, fella from the old days. It's like, this is like 18... Well, this is published in 1870, but it was the sixth printing. So it was printed, you know, it's written and printed way before that. It's got dates in it later on. Anyway, I am a, what would you call what I am? I am not for the common definition of government, you know, and how we, how we live. I think that we could do a lot better than we're doing, but most people don't really know they're doing that bad. They think the things they're doing bad in are like, oh, there's wars, no, there's this, no, there's that, when the truth is, is the food, the water, medicine are doing you in faster than they should well than life should 
by itself, un, un, uninterrupted, I think. So they're they're pushing the envelope so that we can all go to heaven and meet together a little quicker. And people aren't aware of that because they're too busy trying to survive. And I don't think that uh, when I spend a lot of time playing video games and crap like that, I don't think I'm reading anything. I'm not looking for I'm killing some time. And I still find time to do that and spend the time on the internet. Trying to learn something or find something that I, I believe is so. And it just helps when you can find a link that backs up your side of whatever it is. Now, tonight's episode, I guess, is based around the title of this thing called The Constitution of No Authority. Right by Lysander Spooner, Boston, published by the author, 18 and 70. And we'll go to, I guess go to the beginning. Well, the first and second numbers of this series were published in 1867. So, yeah, it goes back a bit. Now, here we go. And these, this is entitled, No Treason, The Constitution of No Authority. Constitution has no inherent authority or obligation. It has no authority or obligation at all, unless as a contract between man and man. And it does not so much as even purport to be a contract between persons now existing. It purports at most to be only a contract between persons living 80 years ago at the time of this writing. And it can be supposed to have been a, con in con been a contract then only between persons who had already come to years of discretion so as to be competent to make reasonable and obligatory contracts. Furthermore, we know historically that only a small portion even of the people then existing were consulted on the subject, or asked, or permitted to express their consent or dissent in any formal manner. Those persons, if any, who did give their consent formally are all dead now. Most of them have been dead 40, 50, 60, or 70 years. And the Constitution, so far as it was their contract, died with them. They had no natural power or right to make it obligatory upon their children. It is not only plainly impossible in the nature of things that they could bind their posterity, but they did not even attempt to bind them. That is to say, the instrument does not purport to be an agreement between anybody but the people then existing, nor does it either expressly or impliedly assert any right, power, or disposition on their part to bind any but body but themselves. Hmm. Let us see its language. Now, see, these are the Secondhand stories that I I got in the bars when I was uh, what would I I guess call it transitioning into adulthood because I was a uh, late man I was still screwing around twenty seven eight years old and hadn't made any major decisions about what I was going to do until right there and a lot of it was the two years leading up to that these guys in these bars were telling me these stories and now I've got the internet to back up in print everything I've been told over the years. Hmm. And it's quite amazing. You know, it's like uh, when you listen to things like the news uh, off the internet, it's different than the uh, mainstream news. You know, when I look at a thing, I can make up my own mind somehow. It's a little different when I'm reading shit now than it was when there was no choice. You know, if I don't believe a story, well, there you go. I can do whatever I like. Hmm. Now, let us continue on down the uh, Lysander Spooner Road and see where this guy goes. 
The next, uh, let's see, where was I? Ah, here we go. We, the people of the United States, and in brackets, that is the people then existing in the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity. Do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. Now, that's the stuff that I remember, you know, school saying. I don't think I was old enough to know what any of this shit meant. And when I was old enough to know what any of this shit meant, they weren't talking about it in school anymore. So they must have shoved this down, you know, at me when I was like somewhere between 8 and 11. Because I don't remember it after that. And uh, here we are, living the dream, man. Of course, my, my dream got me uh, away, far, far away, from the land of plenty full and you know, true love and all that stuff. Anyway, give me a second here, drink a little sip of coffee, and I'll get back to this epic saga of We the People and stuff by Lysander Spooner and the Mighty Elves of Mordor. Mm. A, it's a dork table. I can fuck around if I want to. Okay, because Mary's not here to tell me not to. It is plain in the first place that this language as an agreement purports to be only what it at most really was. V-I-Z dot dot. A contract between the people then existing and of necessity. Binding as a contract only upon those then existing. Wow, see that this is what I think this is the common sense part of this document that we would all share to some point. I mean, because I mean common sense tells you if you write something down in your lifetime, how are the people that are born two hundred years later, how are they bound to that bit of document that you wrote? Well, look at all the fellers that signed it. They was all Special and stuff. And wait a minute. See, I thought the whole point of becoming the United States in the first place was basically to break away from the kingdom thing and the titles and all that shit. And it turned out they were just relabeling an English product. <laughs> and we've been getting we've been getting fleeced by the media and the education system because. If you can plainly read what I'm reading here, if you can come up with a different idea at the end that there is no United States, it's a joint agreed illusion, and we're brought into it, and if you don't agree with this shit, you're pretty well screwed in society. People will laugh at you if you go out there and tell them this is all an illusion. Then somebody will hit you in the head and go, no, it's not. Feel that? See? But that's the reasoning of a child. You know, that's how children figure things out. They knock it over. Or you ever see these idiots that walk up to a microphone and tap it? Like, wait a minute. You can't speak to find out if the fucking thing's going to work or not? <laughs> you say, hello, testing. Can you hear me? No. These 9 out of 10 chim these chimpanzees tap on a fucking microphone to see if it's working. Now, where do we get these just bad uh, ways of behaving? And they're so they're so innocent, you know. You don't think about it as much, but you know, if, I bet um, Anti would understand. You tap on that mic, or even maybe even Grimner because he's a guitar player. But you tap on that mic, and over a period of time, you shorten the life expectancy of that piece of equipment because you've been slapping it. You're bound to knock something inside it loose over a period of time. So, that's kind of like, wait a minute. why? Here's another interruption to my story. 
Ever hear these stories about how in the slave days they whipped the slaves to make them work? Well, I don't know about the rest of you out there, but when my dad got a little happy, he didn't do a lot of damage, but he would whip my butt with a belt. And I'm telling you, from my butt, just that, I can't imagine if he would have done that to my back. And uh, they're trying to tell us in school, you know, well, they, they whipped the slaves to make them work harder. And all I could think of is, boy, he hit me with the belt on the ass, and I won't do shit for him now. <laughs> so I'm trying to figure out ways to poison his fucking coffee, but I'm only nine years old. I don't know what poison is yet. So, no, don't, you know, all these ideas we've been raised with, just backwards from reality. Hmm. Well, that's my reality. Maybe not yours, but I've never gotten a good result out of somebody I've threatened. You do this or I'll blah, blah, blah. Well, hmm. Because when I'm the one on the receiving end of that, I might do it. But you're going to wish I didn't after I'm finished. And that's a whole other story. I'll try to remember that one from Miss Mary, which she visits me on in a perfect world Tuesday. Okay. Wow, I'm, get, I'm getting so much up this story. I still needed a little break, get a little sip, and change my mind for a minute. All right, we're going to go back to the contract story. Now, suppose an agreement were entered into in this form. We, the people of Boston, agree to maintain a fort on Governor's Island to protect ourselves and our posterity against invasion. This agreement, as an agreement, would clearly bind nobody but the people then existing. Secondly, it would assert no right, power, or disposition on their part to compel their posterity to maintain such a fort. It would only indicate that the, sup the supposed welfare of their posterity was one of the motives that induced the original parties to enter into the agreement. When a woman, wait, when a man says he is, I'm a little blurry here, he does not mean to be understood as saying that he has any thought of binding them, nor is it to be inferred that he is so foolish as to imagine that he has any right or power to bind them to live in it. So far as they are concerned, he only means to be understood as saying that his hopes and motives in building it are that they, or at least some of them, may find it for their happiness to live in it. So when a man says he is planting a tree for himself and his posterity, he does not mean to be understood as saying that he has any thought of compelling them, nor is it to be inferred that he is such a simpleton as to imagine that he has any right or power to compel them to eat the fruit. Wow. This is, see, and then it's written in a, a different style of English than we're usually using we don't, I don't write like this. I'd like to write like that. It's a little bit more uh, confusing. But that's because the order of some of these words are kind of foreign to me. I've been using slang and danglish and everything else for so long, you know, that I don't think uh, I'm capable at this point of speaking proper English. And not that that would really help in the long run. But, alas, it does make for an interesting read. I don't know how you guys feel about it. I don't see nobody complaining in so far yet. I think I got four people paying attention here. Anyway, I'm enjoying my story, so I think I'm going to continue with it. Uh, ah. Okay. Well, trying to figure out where I left off. <laughs> here we go. So, it was with those who originally adopted the Constitution, whatever may have been their personal intentions, the legal meaning of their language so far as their posterity was concerned, simply was that their hopes and motives 
in entering into the agreement were that it might prove useful and acceptable to their posterity, that it may might promote their union, safety, tranquility, and welfare, <laughs> and that it might tend to secure to them the blessings of liberty. Hmm, that's interesting. Uh, okay, the language is the language does not assert nor at all imply any right, power, or disposition on the part of the original parties to the agreement to compel their posterity to live under it. If they had intended to bind their posterity to live under it, they should have said that their object was not to secure to them the blessings of liberty, but to make slaves of them. For if their posterity are bound to live under it, they are nothing less than the slaves of their foolish, tyrannical, and dead grandfathers. Wow. I don't disagree with the whole idea of this, tell you that. But I've been told I'm easily satisfied. <clears throat> wait a minute. Pancakes is talking about basic basil. Hey, wait a minute. This isn't about basil today, you crazy mental. It's about Lysander Spooner and the, uh, oh, just a different version of looking at this government because, you know, with the right indoctrination, it's not really hard, I don't think, to uh, fall under the hypnotic spell of the power of this fucking government and all its toys and its, you know, tentacles, all the favors that you can get because of uh, holding their paperwork compared to some other countries. And then there's other countries that have the same equal or better, you know, advantages to hold in their paperwork. It just depends, I think, on where you are at the time and what country you originate from. And depending on where you're at, some people just beam and some people can't. You know, it's, it's very strange uh, how we how we're taught to interpret this paper game, I think, to me anyway. So, back to my story. It cannot be said that the Constitution formed the people of the United States for all time into a corporation. It does not speak of the people as a corporation, but as individuals. Corporation does not describe itself as we, nor as people, nor as ourselves, nor does a corporation in legal language have any posterity. It supposes itself to have and speaks of itself as having perpetual existence as a single individuality. Wow, that's kind of interesting because I've always... Uh, I've always wondered about that since I was a little kid. You know, I questioned authority to a point. And it was usually, you know, who told you you could bully me around? You know, what what the fuck is going on here? I was probably like 11 or 12 when I first started getting my first real uh, sense of wanting to be free of this shit that I wasn't comfortable with. And when I look back, I was not uh, I was not surrounded by like-minded kids. There, huh? I was the one that people didn't understand. You know? uh, so to be where I'm at today is absolutely no surprise. And that's not to say that it's smarter or any of that horseshit. It's just my path went a completely different way than mainstream. And well, that get kind of obvious by the things I guess I talk about, but. Uh, every trap laid for us even though I hit a lot of them uh, nothing got me except medical medical got me in the early 2000s I had some hernia trouble and then it got me again with the uh, high blood pressure thing but I got healed from the hernias and I learned my lesson on the uh, blood pressure medicine about taking uh, pharma big pharma 
No, 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 no. And e ever since the decision was made, every bit of information that I can believe all seems to indicate that I made the right choice. Yeah. And yeah, then I'm going to go back thinking about old Vinny in the hospital. So, yeah, well, you know, you you do what you got to do in life to survive, I suppose. Now, let's see, where did I leave off? There we go. Meanwhile, back to my story. Moreover, no body of men existing at any one time have the power to create a perpetual corporation. A corporation can become practically perpetual only by the voluntary accession of new members as the old ones die off. But for this voluntary accession of new members, the corporation necessarily dies with the death of those who originally composed it. Wow, Grim, are you following this stuff? Are you listening? I don't know. Maybe you're not. I might have pushed the envelope a little too far with my wanderings to, uh, you know, mental retardation and weed. But uh, some of this stuff is just priceless. Okay. Uh, legally speaking, therefore, there is in the Constitution nothing that professes or attempts to bind the posterity of those who established it. If then those who established the Constitution had no power to bind and did not attempt to bind their posterity, the question arises whether their posterity have bound, bound themselves. If they have done so, they can have done so in only one or both of these two ways, VIZ, by voting and paying taxes. Well, there's a trap lid right there that we constantly are telling people on the reallibertymedia.com chat at the peril of being laughed at in society that voting is not a good thing. You're really kind of wasting your freaking time anyway. They got electoral college for a reason. And then they'll start with, oh, the smaller things. Well, that's not what this is about. This is about this federal shit. Yeah. And we're all kind into believing we need it. Oh, what would we do without the government? Well, try it and see what happens. It's not so bad. I recommend to all of you, do what I did. Try another government for two and a half years. And if you're still homesick and you miss America, go back. <laughs> it's not hard. It's just, it's well, maybe, maybe the prison thing has gotten really bad in the States and you can't get out no more for a trip. You know, wander around the planet and see what's cooking. You know, because there's seven fucking billion people. You know, and if you're not happy where you are, go somewhere else and see what it's like there. It's real. I still remember when Cakes came over here. He looked, he was ill. He didn't look too good. And uh, I've seen him on Skype since because we uh, used Skype to, to chit chat with him sometimes. Me and Sir, and uh, he looked a lot better. He's back in the. He's back in the driver's seat. But illness, man. People can get you ill. And next thing you know. Love you, pancakes. Ah, Cirque yells, love you, pancakes. From across on couch land. Okay, Grim. Yeah, I don't mean to bore anyone with this old, you know, this old crap, so to speak. It's just the way it's written is so different than the way we talk about it. You know, this kind of makes it simpler in a lot of ways. It's more... Black and white. It's like what I tell Cirque about Danish compared to English. You can say it 11 ways in English, but you'll only find one way to say it in Danish. Unless you use slang, and then that's not Danish anymore. Then it's like what we do. Latin, you know, dog Latin. So, when we communicate with each other, there's the very first step to having a problem with somebody. Talk to them. Because <laughs> your belief system... Versus their belief system, versus all this stupid shit that we gotta fucking think we know and don't know and understand and all this horse shit. When none of it really matters in the end of the day, any damn way. But it's an entertainment and it explains to me what's going on. But uh, hmm. I think I could do just fine, just equally as fine without it. It would just be a different life. It wouldn't be. Uh, 
traumatized. You know, I just wouldn't have the electricity to uh, use an internet for. I'd find other things to do. So, being as we got this fucking thing, you know, let's try to make the best of it. Okay, back to this epic tale by Les Sanders Spooner. I'll give it a little bit more read in it. Then I'll try to find something different. But uh, Or should I just quit while where I was? Yeah. I posted it in the notes. It is a long, long, long thing. But just that little bit in the front. You know, if you didn't contract to something, okay, how did you get into the position that you're in? And then they tell you, by voting and by paying taxes. Those are the traps of society. So, if you don't want to participate in society, all you got to do is not vote and not pay any taxes. Hmm. Well, isn't that an interesting predicament to be in? Especially in a country where... Um, Paying taxes here, socially, is not the big drag and uh, problem it is back in the States. And the taxes are higher here. But I find people give a lot less uh, negative to the fact that they pay taxes. I've been down to that bar, and these people, you know, they've they've owned the bar for a while, blah, blah, blah. Whatever, and the man is, uh, he's got a full-time job so they've got money to live on their comfortable folk but they're not so greedy with what they do have that they snivel up and try to find ways to cheat on their taxes so and that's not just America there's lots of places there's probably people here trying to fucking do it just the people I seem to encounter don't complain that have something to tax in the first place and that's quite the change from where I'm from, where uh, we we resent it because what we're told they do with this shit is just so fucking insulting. If they told you the truth, who, who'd pay? <laughs> we're paying the Rothschilds for interest that they don't have coming. But we get our money from them, so... Oh, yeah, here's another thing I read about a month or two back. The company that prints... Government, say, identification cards and currency is all gone through the Rothschilds, supposedly, right? Well, I read a couple months ago that because of the Internet and the electronic traffic, the desire for the paper has been cut back. So now they're putting out less product to serve the market. They're making less money. And these people are the ones that, hey, they want it all. 99% 99% ain't enough. What do you got in your pocket? Come here. Come on, let me fill that. <laughs> That's how these bankers are. So what are they going to do when the uh, they really take a dump and people you know, stop using the paper completely? And they go, well, they're, they're doing this on purpose. Are they? They're going to cut out a whole lot of people by eliminating the uh, fiat currency. Unless those poor people have an electronic card doled out to them by the state, and then what better way is there to control somebody than through their finance, through their own consent? Yeah, government, here, I don't need cash. Give me that card. Cash is too much of a problem. I don't want to be responsible for being responsible for my own money. I want the government to do it, so I'm going to take their card. (laughs) And then one day the government says, uh-oh, the Rothschilds, the, the, check, the check bounced. Holy shit, what are we going to do? Because that's what happens when you live on credit, and we do. That's why the governments are all trillions in debt, because they don't have any fucking money. And they don't have any money because all the money that's printed has got a debt attached to it. <laughs> So, if you've never heard this story about money, this is your first time. Everybody else is bored and committing suicide. There he goes again about the fucking money. But, I still believe there's a lot more people that don't know the truth than do. And, nine out of ten of them don't really seem too interested either. So, I'm looking for a specific kind of mind 
to throw my specific kind of shit at. It's really weird. What has Grim said something to me here? It's got my name on it. I think I'll read it out loud. Wish me luck. Flash somebody. Maybe of additional interest to you, we also have this. Vices are not crimes by Lysander Spooner. Yeah. Ah, very good. Thank you, Grimner. Yeah, I'm always looking for something that uh, I'm not familiar with or new. But this old, worn-out, you know, Star Trek shit, and Space Force, and voting, money, medicine, just about every fucking thing, if you think about it, right? But what are you going to do? You can't really stop it all, but you can stop it for yourself if you want to, but most people are so involved in it. I couldn't imagine being that deep-rooted into this social reality that I made my decisions based off what they tell me, like this, uh, <laughs> the coronavirus thing. <laughs> now, I'm so fucking confused here. Maybe you geniuses in the real liberty media dot com chat, sort me out on my places and my time zones, because I'm all messed up here in Denmark, right? And the way I understand this coronavirus and 5G thing is, uh, they were talking about already unleashing um, 4G in China. Didn't say specifically where, according to what I read. I wasn't looking for cities. But I remember reading 4G. So, I thought, what the fuck coincidence is this? That people are getting a new virus just when they roll out 4G. I thought it might have been 5G. But I can't prove that. But I do remember reading 4G. Look it up. I got you people. Look it up. I'm doing my best Hansel right here. Look it up! It's in there. It's on, on every other page. You'll see. God. So, well, Hannah says hi. So, uh, wow. We live in this modern day. <laughs> Everything is instant. People are crazy. We've all gone insane. I don't think there's one of us that can claim any kind of sanity anymore. And I blame that. On the input of our sustenance and air, you know, water, the things that we absorb naturally have been tampered with. And I believe that it's made people angry and uncomfortable, displeased with what's going on around them, not happy, very, 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 very unhappy people. And, uh, hey, Dork Cake says to get your grinders ready. I guess you're going to roll one up 420. Oh, that was a while ago. I didn't realize what time it is. Because I was on me an epic rant about absolutely nothing on this here dark table. Because I can do that when Mary's not around. Just let my brain wander off to the first thing I think of. And uh, I saw this picture. I'm going to post this uh, comp thing. picture I saw in the mines the other day. And it made me giggle. Because, wait a minute, I might have put the wrong thing up. Uh, I don't know, let me try to open that. Hold on a minute, it's a picture I tried to put up. But I might have had something, no, that's it. Open that little baby up. And uh, it just reminded me of how we take things for, you know, word value. Let's see. Oh, they're doing the food on the RealLibertyMedia.com chat. I think uh, Dork Cakes is, oh, he's talking about coffee and mixing stuff. There you go. They're being sociable at the reallibertymedia.com chat. And I interrupted with this little cartoon. And it's just the, you know, we're in their house, the old lady in the shoe. It says, I sent the kids to live with their father. I refuse to have them grow up next to a crack house. Of course, the next house over is a you know, plumber's with his ass hanging out with his belt. A crack house. So I thought it was kind of clever, but uh, hmm. uh, I kind of rolled that way about drugs and laughing and shit. Coffee, yeah, that's what I said. You mixing stuff and adding stuff. Coffee, 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 coffee. I don't, I don't bother with coffee. Cirque does coffee. I just drink it. I 
I don't think I'm licensed or bonded to operate a coffee machine in the state of Denmark. <laughs> That's my defense. Or the old, my personal favorite, I didn't do it. This is how I'm going to plea. I didn't do it. Take the girl. It's all her idea. I was just an accomplice. That's, I learned that from Hansel because Hansel is a magtow. And I didn't even know what that was. You know, there's, there's a whole group. <laughs> you guys are going to crack up. There's a whole group of guys out there, right, that don't want to get involved with women. And they're blaming it on the times that they're in instead of the uh, five-minute attention span that the average 30-year-old has today. <laughs> because they never had to learn how to do anything. So if it doesn't work, throw it out and get another one. You know, and we grew up differently, I think. My generation did, because I'm an old fucker now. I can say all that kind of shit. Oh, yeah, SNL was over two, three years after it started. Yeah, when, when Belushi went, that was pretty much the end of that. In my humble opinion, Mr. Pancakes, but what, who am I to judge? And all these celebrities that die, I start to wonder, you know, they've got all the fucking money on the world. This, that, and the other. They're paid to pretend to be people they're not. This is a really fucking big planet. And you would be amazed on how easily it would be to shave your head and just blend into a crowd and nobody would notice you. Or grow your mop out and just be undistinguishable under a big load of hair and a face. Full of, you know, whiskers. And people wouldn't know who you were. But... See, coincidentally, we've got all this high-tech coming up our asses. Facial recognition by computers. Because they got all the damn technology in the fucking world, right? They can do everything. They go to the moon. They balance, uh, what, eight, 87 um, digit freaking bank deals every day. And I mean, I'm sorry, folks, but I, I just don't really think I'd buy all this crap. Not that, some of it ain't real, but all of it really, I, I can't um, I can't process too much as far as all the problems, and all the disasters, natural disasters, man-made disasters, what kind, what kind of disaster doesn't have something in front of it right now? You know, it's got to, they shove the shit in your face all the time, day after day after day. And then with the 50 states, or... I guess in Europe, however many countries there are, 15. So you crowd people into these big metropolises places, right? You over you overcrowd them, you undernourish them, and then you sit back and you watch the fighting. And I think that is exactly what the results of population are right now. Anything big, people are cracking under the stress. And I don't know, maybe this... <laughs> Maybe this coronavirus that they invented in a laboratory, whatever, I don't know. I'm just trying to make sense of what I've read. Three years from the time they file for the freaking patent to the day the virus patent comes through and that's the very day the first case of it hits the freaking world. Oh, look, it's broke out in China. What a fucking coincidence that was. I don't know how they beat the time zones. <laughs> I forget what time Grimm comes on, you know, <laughs> but all these geniuses in power, they've got all these wheels turning. It's like the three cog um, thing that they show you. Cirque's pointed this out, right? Is that the gears turn, but it won't, it won't continue. It'll lock up and jam on you because it's an odd number. It needs to be even to operate. And all these logos are all about odd even three looking like gears turning to make something operate. So she's trying to tell me, is at the time I'm hearing this, is, hey, look, at they're misleading people with these logos because people don't understand that that won't work. And that's the way I interpret her little thing. So, wow, look at how easy it is to, to uh, dazzle folks with a picture <laughs> A picture or a story. 
I guess I'm trying to do it with my Lysander Spooner episode tonight. But I don't know. I like to listen to other people do radio, so who knows? I, I've listened to my own show. And it when I'm doing it, it's a lot worse in my head <laughs> doing the fucking thing than it is when, I, when I'm settled down and I'm alone and I can listen to what I said. It's a completely different show. So anyway, let me see what I got. If I got anything else interesting, because uh, Grimner opened up a link for me called Vices Are Not Crimes by Lysander Spooner, A Vindication of Moral Liberty. So I might not read much of this, but I am going to post it in the notes so that we've got a Lysander Spooner-based uh, uh, show for the dork table. And if people want to know what anything there is to know about, you can find most of it from this. I, I believe that these links will take you to more links to take you to more links. And after a few years of doing the Internet, you get a taste for uh, the crap that's not real. just kind of slaps you in the head somehow, I think. And maybe not slap, but... Th there's just some things that you look at the end result that they try to present to us... And it's kind of obvious that, that that's not possible without a lot of preparation, you know. And they show up and they go, oh, look what happened this morning. Somebody broke out in China with a virus. Yeah, how many, how many years do you think they got that? These people can't run a fucking train station. <laughs> but <laughs> they want you to believe that they can pick the time of day the virus they just panted, patented is going to come out and hit the public. Wow, these guys are good. Remember they did 9-11? <laughs> what, what chance that was. <laughs> well, let's see. Which airline is going to shit today, folks? Let's bet heavy on those bastards. And there was a, a lot of money made on betting on companies to fail on that particular day. You guys call it the stock market. I call it fuck off <laughs> the markets. Uh, the, I guess it's a con man's dream, the stock market. You don't really need uh, anything. You can fake your way into that world and ride <laughs> ride the coattails of others. <laughs> and, and if you can live with yourself doing that kind of snaky shit... <laughs> Uh, go go do it. You know, but to me, it's all uh, just license stealing. And licenses are you're buying a piece of paper that gives you a right to break a law. <laughs> That's what a license is. <laughs> you paid the fee. You can break the law, but not the other guy. And then you're going to go, well, what about murder? No, I'm talking about statutes and codes, just in case you didn't know. Because beginner people that don't really know what the hell I'm talking about right now. <laughs> I feel for you, I suppose, if you're out there. And if you're not, my sympathy is going to the people that have heard me say it before. Because <laughs> I've been doing the door table for a while. Uh, it relieves the tension of uh, this you know, illusion of society that I've got painted in my mind, I think. Because it's not real. There's no physical connection at all of any fucking kind to anything right now other than the building I'm sitting in and this computer. And I'm looking at a screen of text. So I don't feel like, you know, I popped on my shirt and, you know, Scotty beat me any fucking way. I still feel I'm sitting in the room I'm in. So I don't, hey, Hannibal. So I don't have this, uh, the, that wander thing I used to have where I always wanted to see what was up. Uh, well, what's it like over there? What's it like over here? Um, but now that I haven't, <laughs> I replaced it with uh, the identification of my surroundings as comfort. So I can't find room in my uh, little domicile for the additions of the illusion of government interfering in my life, even though they have, like uh, with <laughs> the hash crisis we have going on right now. Prices have been disturbed, and I believe it's political. Got everything to do with the uh, United States being right smack dab in the middle of the Middle East right now. 
The Jews are going crazy. Everybody wants to go to freaking war. Even the military wants a war. <laughs> You'd think they're the last ones that would want to go to work, you know. What happened to the ladies about said go, wait a minute. War I don't want to work. Nah, let's not go to war. Let's let's be peacenik warmongers. <laughs> Wonder who the hell that would impress. John Bolton probably shoot you with his own gun. But, you know, we all have our phobias. Anyway, so I'm off on some tangent. Let's go back to uh, some Lysander Spooner for a few minutes. I got ten minutes left to make an hour. You know, should I just do a one? Sh yeah, be an instant solo. I just do one hour, two hours alone. It's not. So, it's way more fun with Miss Mary. I'm telling you. She if she calls me in the next ten minutes, I'll, I'll do another sh uh, another hour with her. But in the meantime. Uh, Grimner sent me another link, and it was, Vices are those acts by which a man harms himself or his property. Crimes are those acts by which one man harms the person or property of another. Vices are simply the errors which a man makes in his search after his own happiness. Unlike crimes, they imply no malice toward others and no interference with their persons or property. In vices, the very essence of crime, that is, the design to injure the person or, or property of another, is wanting. Wow, grim. See, and yeah, there's that commonality between some of us weirdos that associate at the reallibertymedia.com chat. And that's basically how we are. You know, chatty, you got shit to say on a computer screen. But... As far as the malice and motive to hurt other people, most of us don't seem to carry that around. Now, there's a few that brag about it, and I still wonder, you know, uh, I was 15 once, you know, and it took me a few years to realize I wasn't as big as my little brother. <laughs> my little brother's like, I don't know, I'm 5'4", so he's like uh, nine inches taller than me. Maybe eight, eight or nine, something like that. Oh, hey, really? Okay, uh, Frog and Cake said two hours. Wow, okay, I'm doing great. Thank you, Frog. I, it's really weird when you're doing this thing and just talking off the top of my head sometimes. Or Depends. I felt like reading this uh, Lysander Spooner guy. It's incredible. And these are the very opposite things of uh, how... The school system approached me, you know. They, I don't remember anybody ever offering me a chance to not do any of the shit that I was doing. It was always, you got to do this. And if you asked why, crack, shut the fuck up and do what you're told. And, you know, good slave masters, well, they know that if they just crack the whip and don't draw blood, and just get the fucking attention and the point made, that the slave will comply. No, they tried and they tried and they tried and they tried. Never did work with me. Hmm. And I think that my life would have probably been uh, way more financially successful, you know, had I taken that, uh, the evil way to me, that lying, cheating, taking advantage, trying to find ways to cheat on your income tax, to save money so you can buy a boat you don't need, so you can throw, you know, have a hole in the water that you can actually pour money into. You know, there you go. There, the height of fucking uh, greed is to own shit. You know, I, this is mine. And I, I grew out of that somehow. I don't get it. I think that the things that are mine are internal. <laughs> and the only person that really cares about my internals is sir. <laughs> I'm not an easy person to get along with. I don't think anybody is, but... You know, if you're lucky enough to find a, a bolt that fits your nut, then lucky is with you. Ah, grab. Dork cakes is rooting me on. Anyway, yeah, hey, Rob. Oh, yeah, I didn't read that yet. I just read, read that. You want to uh, hook up on wire and have a little chat for a bit, Rob? Yeah, I'd like to do that. Hold on, let me open up my wire. Try to get Mr. Rob Works to join us here on the stork table. I was slow reading the chat, and I didn't notice that. Because ah, I'm such a, I'm so fucking lazy. 
Ah, I don't want to read. <laughs> okay, anyway, let's see here. I'm gonna, I'm tinkering around talking while I'm trying to get Mr. Rob Works on the bat phone here. So, yeah, let, let me write that in there. He, he, I'm sure he heard me, but yeah. Uh, come on, Rob Works. There you go. I even typed it in the chat, so it was absolutely no mistake. But, yeah, Rob Rob hasn't done a radio show with me in a long time. I was taking it all personal, like, hey. But I just, you know, some people don't do the radio as well as others, I think. It just didn't seem to interest him all that much. But I want to get him on this fucker. <laughs> Come on, Rob works, you lazy old prick. Anyway. I guess I could do another episode of the Lysander Spooner Rules to Live By. Ah, wait a minute. I heard an incoming call. Okay, we're going to pass on that, and I'm going to get a hold of Rob Works right now for your listening entertainment. Ding, 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 Oh, you got to turn your your sound off. Yeah, you're getting the feedback through the headphones. I even typed it in the chat, so it was absolutely no mistake. Oh, hang on. Yeah, yeah, I will. We yeah, weren't Rob. expecting any of this. So for your listening and entertainment, he's shutting down his equipment right now. That's all right. Hey, Rob Works. How's it going, man? Hey, welcome to the freaking dork table land. of It's like no man's land. I fired Vinny a couple of weeks ago, and Mary's been busy, so I've been trying to do this myself. I hear you. So what is going on with you, Mr. Rob Works? I heard that you uh, found some snake oil. Yes, sir. I'll tell you what. If uh, I, You want me to mute, say mute, and if you don't, I won't. But uh, you want to take a few minutes and do something and put a link in, and I'll post it in the notes for this, for your epic story about what you found oh god no i don't want you to move you okay can i interrupt you and make you feel uncomfortable <laughs> yeah i don't really want to do a diet chart on it but uh. <laughs> no but i might have a question or two that other folks might not think of you know how i get <laughs> well this girl asked in the chat room there how is Sealy different from cheech marin's cbd how would you explain that, though, in simple, just bonehead well, logic that I would understand? It's easy. Well, oh, wait, product. wait, wait. Who's beeping? Is that, uh, that's me on the... Uh, oh. Is that... Uh, yeah, I got a... How can I mute this? Yeah, I got that beeping thing going on. Where's the mute for that? It's right there. Because I can't quit the um, wire. Uh, was you? Or me? No, that's me. Okay. I can see. Oh, oh, this is not good. Hold on. Well, if I how do I mute the bell though? Hang on, I just need to. Oh, you need to. Oh, I thought it was me. But anyhow, you managed to find something in the CBD line, CBD oil line, that's unique to anything else that's on the market. That's what got my attention. Oh. And you seem to have stopped on your bells, so that worked. Yeah, it's... I've got the voice meter running. It's pulling everything in. Uh, yeah, well, doing radio is a little... It's a little stressful on your equipment. That. Okay, as I was going to say, this girl asked, well, how is my product different than any other kind of CBD or Cheech Marin's. And the answer to that is it's what we've done is taken the CBD oil and nano sized it. Uh Oh, we still got dings on the, uh, yeah. Why? Wait a minute. It's, it's the, let me hang on. I can, uh, just let, give me one moment. All right. Well, you're the, between the two of us, I'm really bad with this computer. 
but I know something's ringing over my, you know, the sound of your voice. That part I could figure out. But how to stop it? I need Grim or you or Cowboy Tech. But there's about a half a dozen guys on the RLM that could help you in a crisis with a computer. Write my name in the chat now if it does it. Okay, do what, me? Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's what it was. Your whole name, Rob, works. Okay. Yeah, just. There you go. Hit, hit, tap. Like that? Okay, good. Yeah. good. That oh, one. yay. Bless you. Well, you can always okay. put it back after you get done with this. So let's yeah, yeah let's start over again. You got to name the call this stuff and make it uh, more familiar so people know what's going on. Is Sealy by Design. Okay. And uh, it's created by a, a guy named Brad Hager out of Las Vegas. Um, he discovered this product. Uh, looking for help for his son, actually. Um, His son has uh, scoliosis. And they they had tried 18 different kinds of DVDs, all kinds of lotions, creams, and all these things. So they were getting ready to go out of town, and his wife, Marcy, had uh, found this one more thing to try, and they just handed it to him. Here, try this while we're gone. And so they go out of town for eight days. They come back. The kid is up walking around, um, just acting normal. They're like, what the hell? What's Mm -hmm. going on? Oh, he said, oh, yeah, this stuff works. Here, Dad, you're going to make millions of dollars off of this. Mm -hmm. That was his dad. So... (laughs) So Brad went out to this company and uh, basically worked a deal with them to market that product. Well, how do you That's get how do you get by the FDA and all that kind of garbage? Or is this FDA approved and all this? There are no supplements of this of any kind that are FDA approved. So you don't need, right. Well, legally, some people have been kind into believing the most bizarre shit, Rod. You got to remember that. I understand. Okay. And their version of legal and yours may be different, but I just thought you wanted to make a moment to uh, explain how it really works. Government legalized here. Uh, You can look, anybody can look that up. So it's pretty much known at this point that they legalized him. We're growing it everywhere. CBD is everywhere. We got CBD shops down here. You can go walk in and buy CBD. Okay. Right. So it's so, getting more and more common. Uh, but to the point of that question is, is what's the quality of our product? And it's all pharmaceutical grade. It's all lab tested. There's four national laboratories. Um, that analyze our product for purity and uh, contaminants. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but what what, okay, what makes it different? I mean, if you're just going to explain it to me, because you know how simple I can be, right? Right. What would the um, shortest way to, to tell me be? Uh, the difference is, is what we've done is taking the uh, CBD oil and reduced it in size, it nanosized it. Now, uh, a little bit of biology. The body is 74, 75% water, whatever. The cells, in order to get nutrition, when you eat food, it goes into your digestive system, hmm. goes through your stomach, gets broken down, goes into your kidneys and livers, and gets broken down, and it gets put out to the bloodstream to feed the cells. Well, All most nutrients. girls write into you on the chat. Sorry to interrupt you like that, but it was yeah. too weird. I'm a little okay. high tonight, Rob. Forgive me for my rudeness. Typically, uh, the cells, mm-hmm. in order to enter a cell, a particle has to be less than 60 to 80 nanometers in size. Okay, and what would 60 to what would that even be? That's, uh, that's hard to imagine. It's I so small you couldn't that. see it. Right? Yeah. Let me Let me finish. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got excited. You don't have to mute, but just mute your mouth for a second. Uh, No, no. Oh. (laughs) 
<laughs> anyway, uh, the body, the, the cells, in order to for nutrients to enter the cell, the particles have to be uh, below a certain threshold. Now, typical uh, nano or C, typical CBD oil is about 2,000 nanometers in size. The particles are. And so we break those down to seven nanometers in size. What's okay. the advantage with the smaller size? The smaller size means that they're directly bioavailable to the cells. Oh, uh, so less work for yeah. your body to go through the process, right? Right. Well, that's oh, okay. a side bit, actually. That's it because it, uh, uh, all the other kind of – just eating food, it has to go through your digestive system. And your body. I mean, that's normal, everyday uh, thing. So the bigger something is, the harder, it, the more work your body goes yeah. through to, to digest now, it, right? What happens is yeah. when you take regular CBD oil, those particles are like 2,000 nanometers in size. They're trying to get through a 60 to 80 nanometer aperture that they oh. have to go through into the cell to feed the, the body. Okay. Yeah. Okay, it's like taking a basketball and trying to shove mm -hmm. it into a golf cup. Well, or is it like a log jam where it, just slows it down to a snake's pace and it takes forever. No, no. No, it's, it's it complete. Has, it's like a basketball. You okay, so it, it doesn't back. get through at all. So the basketball, okay, you're in the bloodstream. The basketball continues through the bloodstream, goes into the kidneys to be processed. It gets processed, breaks it down. You end up with about 10% of the actual benefit of the CBD. Oh, yeah, the regular yeah, yeah. What we do is we take yeah. that basketball and we break it down to the size of marbles. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Makes Fill sense. a little cup up with them. Okay. Okay. You've got that many little particles of CBD, which actually can go get into the cells, get to the CBD receptors that every human body has, and get the benefit from it. Yeah. And you've been taking this yourself yeah. too, the right? CBD that our product is now. Most people have never heard of CBG. Mm. Yeah, I never did. CBG so is to 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 this. all the cannabinoids. It's like the hemp plant's T cell. Okay. Oh. So the CBG actually turns into all the other CBDs and THC as well in the in the pot plants. So we have a fifty fifty blend of CBD CBG. And the only way you can get CBG oil is to harvest the hemp plant when it's very young. Ah. Because what happens is that the CBG, when the hemp plant is sprouts and, and grows as it grows, it starts out with nothing but CBG. And then it and evolves into this. Uh, wow, I didn't know that. It, and then it transitions into the, all the other types of cannabinoids. Wow. It matures. So you have to harvest these plants when they're very young. Hmm. So we use a 50-50 blend of CBD, CBD plus. We have a 90. There's uh, 90 different uh, vitamins and minerals and and uh, uh, nutrients. Nutri uh, let's see, nootropics and let me trying to bring it up here. Um, it's all uh, non-GMO, uh, organic. Oh, and do you have a copy of that link for the notes? Post it on the RLM and I'll copy it from there. Catch my link anytime by putting in the bot command Sealy. Oh, I didn't uh, know that. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. And my website, robworks.com. Uh, so, oh, that, well, I can just copy that one. See how fancy you guys are with your bot? Oh, my buddy was asking about that when he was over the other day about the bots on the RLM. And I was saying that you, know, you guys are a bunch of computer guys and you make these bots to do tasks. And, yeah. well, I'm I'm not the computer nerd you are. I'm just passing on what little bit I've uh, uh, you know absorbed, <laughs> like the CBD. I absorbed yeah. a little bit of knowledge from just hanging around you guys. So when somebody asks me, I can at least give them some kind of answer not i don't know <laughs> right well so, uh, i was impressed with myself there uh, you're the smart guy here yeah, mister the other ingredients 
is uh, another thing that some people that are, uh, I know Graham's will probably have heard of this. It's called MSM. Huh. Uh, ethyl sulfonyl methane. Wow. And so that's uh, some, uh, Steve had heard of that and, and his wife, uh, Carolyn, she's she's an herbalist. So, and he was actually taking that for a period of time. Uh, and Dave has too, my other friend Dave that I've talked about in the chat room before. Um, and then the other things that it has in it is Boswellia serrata, ashwagandha, curcumin, which you've probably heard of, uh, Cordalis yanhusto. These are all herbs. Sarsaparilla rhizome and resveratrol. You may have heard of that one. I know some people probably have. That's the anti-aging uh, <laughs> uh, thing that it's was been popular for a while. Hmm. So um, that is what makes us different than all the other CBD oils. Nobody else has it. Uh, where it's an exclusive product to to our company, um, it's all patented and all that crap. So, yeah, well, see, legally, you got to remember, man. People in America or people with any kind of funding, in, in particular, would be really concerned about legal problems with anything to do with CBD or pot or cannabis. Out of just that deep-rooted fucking fear we've had all our lives of being arrested, I've run into that uh, several times. Uh, how do you how do you answer that to him? I mean, uh, his son is a is a fire uh, firefighter. Fireman. Mm-hmm. He, he is real interested in it, but he's afraid of because oh mm-hmm. my god, I'm a, I'm going to get drug tested and they're gonna they're gonna bust no, me. No, no, no. This is different. But, oh, I'm sorry, uh, Rob. Yeah. Mm. The point the point I was getting at is all of our stuff is lab tested. There's like I said, there's four uh national laboratories that test all of our stuff. It's test, actually tested three times before it uh from the time we get the oil. Mm. Um it's tested the oil is tested as it comes in. We use an organic uh oil product mm. from the UK uh, or EU, somewhere over there. Mm. Uh, it's imported. It's all organic. That's tested for purity. Uh, our CBD is 99.43% pure. And the CBG is 99.55% pure. And I think Moose has got a couple of questions for you on the chat. <clears throat> hey, Mike. How you doing? Yes, it's uh, it's a daily, it's a daily upkeep thing. Um, Steve, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, ran out about three or four days ago, and he's starting to get his pains back. Huh. And he's got some on order. It's just lapsed there. So, yeah. Well, you use the stuff yourself too, right? Yeah. There I, you go. I have a story to tell. Ooh. I mean, I don't. One of those, you know, oh, oh my God, I, you know, this went away or that went away. I'm a healthy guy. I don't, I mean, other than my smoking, I don't have any health issues. Mm-hmm. I had lungs, but it's because I smoke, <laughs> you know. But other than that, I, you know, I don't have degenerative pain or uh, psoriasis or any crazy stuff like Ma- that. Yeah, that, male that pattern do. balding. <laughs> I don't have that problem either. Um <laughs> So, I mean, like I said, I'm pretty healthy. Um, I'd like to say I'm feeling something from it. Yeah. Uh, but it's yeah. so pronounced that I can say, oh, yeah, that's just crazy, you know. Because you're already, yeah, it, this is like my theory about if you're if you're healthy, post, it's hard to get yeah, sick. Okay. Yeah, like this one, I'm going to post this one right here. So an this improvement, one. wouldn't it would be the same thing. You wouldn't notice it as much as somebody that was ill. Right. I was thinking that up front, but I didn't uh, know how to tell you. The more long term mm. you do it, the more benefit you're going to see. <clears throat> so it's I just, just like anything else. Does your body builds up? Uh, does it store it at all, or is this like vi- vitamin C and you just piss it right out as fast as you get it? It uses it. 
Right. Okay. Well, we have a 99% absorption rate. Right. That's what I mean. It absorbs into your system before you can expel it is when I was trying to. Exactly. Yeah. Absorbed it cells and used as food. Because they're so small going into you that the time it's, you know, the time requirement is met, your body can absorb it. Yeah, I used the yeah. wrong word earlier. I, I always butcher words. So I posted this this uh, picture in the chat. Hmm. Uh, this woman's hand. Yeah. This one was a, is a masseuse. Okay. okay. And it, on the bottom right of the picture, you can see where her hand is She's got psoriasis. Oh, really oh, oh, oh. Right. Yeah. And her hand is all cracked up. And you can see that gouge in the middle where you can not actually see down to the meat. Mm-hmm. Terrible. She I'm not going to open it right now. <laughs> I'll pass on that. I'm the mushy back. inside tonight. Yeah, oh, it's not that gross. It's not blood. I mean, yeah. it's not. I'm wearing my Doric suit. Yeah, cut me a break. Anyway. Ten days later, you can see it's starting to heal up. In three weeks, her hand was completely healed. Oh, well, then, you you sold Moose Girl tonight on your, on your show. I, I know a little bit of the backstory because I've I've seen it. Uh, the owner talks about it in one of the seminars he does. But this woman is a masseuse. She had tried everything, CBD oils, all the different kinds of creams and stuff, you know, mm-hmm. same thing as her son. She was at her wit's end. Uh, and this, she has a really inspiring story anyway. <laughs> uh, and we're getting a lot of these stories. And, and what we're finding is about 70% of the people that take it see a noticeable benefit. That's the good part about it, too. We got this internet thing, too. Instant proof. Yeah. You call somebody out, and they got to they gotta show you. You can't lie anymore. Hide. Yeah. So all this stuff being up front and in your face for once is kind of appealing to me. I, don't, I think all the secrecy about, you know, cannabis over the years has just ruined everything. People have mis they're misinformed about cannabis. And, and instead of and I'm going to harp on my old if instead of an apology from this horrid government we have, what we get is new you know new studies indicate bullshit. Instead of we lied and fucked you for the last eighty years here, let us try to make it better now. But I'm going to thank you for bringing this to us because I, hmm, when this does make it out, I might need it someday. Oh, no? Mike gave the scientific uh, explanation of why nano sizing is beneficial. <laughs> well, I understood I the principle just the way you explained it, and I'm a simple guy, so yeah. it shouldn't be too hard to explain to a brainiac. Right. The brainiacs are probably the ones that are going to give you the most resistance because they're so well indoctrinated. Don't listen. Yeah. Right. Or so he said, uh, I can make a big problem out of a you know, a mountain out of a molehill myself. If I want to. Let's see. Grimner says, uh, we got a message from Grim on here. You mind if I read this? At some okay. point, mention that the annual RLM donation drive starts today. Thank you. Yeah, that's right. This is the month of the year that on all the right. Real Liberty Media chat, all those radio personalities get out there and do a little graveling. Ask people to dig deep into their wallets and throw Grim some dough to help him run the site. And, uh, yeah, there you go. I've done my job. <laughs> so, if you got a few and you want to, you know, make Grim smile, help him run the I'll, RLM. I'll, I'll even throw some incentive in there. Anybody that buys a bottle of my snake oil, I'll donate $10. Oh, you already got moose earlier too, so there's one. Yep. Yeah. Right Ooh, Mr. Deal. Well, I I like that. So what would you say give me like a I don't know, you went to the psoriasis thing. What would something more common be that if I if I wasn't feeling good about something see, I'm so healthy. That my sniveling is usually I bump my hand on something or 
Uh, I, you know, I did something accidentally, but not. I don't wake up, you know, uh, hurting it, so I don't know. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, well, there's. Uh, what would signs be to look out for that would indicate that you might need this to remedy your illness? Is that a better way to ask? Or still no? Hard to say. It's not really designed to treat anything. It's, it's, it's so it's an enhancement to your uh, your already your state of being. It'll either improve it a lot or it'll just stabilize you. That's the way I understood you. You know, if you're healthy, you can't go farther than healthy. There's the end of the road to that. But you can, like I do, uh, additives. I call them, you know, baking soda, turmeric. Rose hip, and let me yeah. Let me do this. Okay, I have posted it in the chat room several times already, but I'll do it again. Oh, Mister Grim says thanks, Rob. That was real generous of you. I thought that that was nice yeah. of you to do that. And when it's you know when it's good here in Denmark, I'll, I'll take one. Right. But you said so, April, so it's a few months down the road. Here, hmm? A blood test before taking swish. And then I'm going to post the one for after. Look at these videos. Yeah. You want to uh, put them in the notes or what? Yeah. Okay, because what I've got for you, I said Rob Work stopped in to tell us about a new CBD oil. Is that good? And then I put, yeah. put your link under it. Okay. And then you get some more. Well, I just want to make sure I'm doing this right for you. I'm real informal here at the Doric Table, Rob. No fancy nonsense. Right, right. Yeah, but there. Okay, so the blood test after taking the swish, like, right? Yeah. Let me explain this. This, okay. this is a, a test. Oh, whoops. The owner of the company did Brad Hager. Uh-huh. He stopped taking the swish for a week. Oh, so. okay. Right. And he went in and got this this blood test done. It's uh, something microscopy, some scientific name. Anyway. It's where they take their own blood, put it on a slide, and look at, under, look at it under the microscope. And they got a real powerful microscope with the camera and the screen. And so that's what you're looking at. So the first one, uh, before swish, you can see the blood is just kind of lethargic. It's just sitting there. It's all clumped together. Um, if you listen to the audio, you can hear the, the uh, nurse or whatever say it's inflamed whatever that means for blood to be inflamed. Uh-huh. And when you watch the second one, you can see that it's all, it's just come alive. I mean, it's, it's, okay. you don't have to be a doctor to look at those two videos and say, yeah, that's better. Oh, your just blood is because of common well, sense, so to speak. Down. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, yeah. Uh, that is, such a powerful video thing to me because okay. I mean and they and they say everybody's blood looks like the first one. Ah, uh, hold on. I'm everybody's putting those links in the thing. Okay. okay. Well I'm trying to do them in the right order so it's not backwards. Right. Alright, let me make sure I did this right. Uh looks like I did the same one twice. Hold on. No, no, oh I see. One says blood after and one says before. Okay. So, blood test after taking. Okay, I got them both. I copied it twice. Hold on. Uh, 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 I'm slow at this, Rob. Go ahead and uh, give us another epic example of something that's good that will come of using the product. Because, you know, it's more of an enhancement than, uh, yeah, that's why I'm taking this. It'll help you if you use it. Uh, we've got a lot of people with different kinds of skin conditions, like I said. Rosacea. Is that pretty common? Um, well, that's what we're getting a lot of the results. Testimonials. Um, so it like might not be on exposed skin we're talking about in the first place. People might have a, a private part that's well, rash. one of them yeah. that went down to Cancun and the lady got something down there and her legs are just swelled up like gigantic mm-hmm. in four days her legs were back to normal uh, another one 
with uh, uh, melanoma. Okay, yeah, I've heard of that. Yeah. Condition that where they've got the big blotches. Yeah, the cancer. Yeah. Um, psoriasis, uh, and then there's several videos people that have uh, uh, people that like Steve has uh, degenerative. I should just read his testimonial. That would be. Uh, let me do that. Let me just read. Sure. Steve's. Uh, uh, where did he go? <laughs> ah, I got it straightened out finally. Okay. okay. Um, so Steve's testimony. Here it is. Several years ago, I think I was 17 years old. I was diagnosed with an inoperable, irreversible degenerative disorder which adversely affects all of the connective tissues throughout my body. As a result, of all, as a result all of the discs in my lumbar tract are slowly disintegrating. I now have scoliosis due to the de deterioration of the connective tissues in my lower spine, and over the past two decades, I've had to grow accustomed to chronic, sometimes debilitating pain. In the beginning, I sought relief from a pain management specialist with a Ph.D. who right away got me addicted to methadone. I got off the methadone, thank God, and then underwent a series of spinal cortisone injections, none of which did any good. Then I was introduced to an herbal remedy called Kratom. We've talked about that in chat before. The, my, uh, the mitrogenine uh, being the active component in Kratom offered some relief, but it was minimal. and was still just masking my pain and not really relieving it. I've also used many CBD oils, essential oils, blends, and other products, both orally and topically, with little to no noticeable benefit. I'm now four days into the use of the Sealy Swish and their, and their pain relief sublingual spray formula, and I must say it has been a very long time since I've had the range of motion that I now have, and my pain level has noticeably been on the decline. My own experience with these products has me firmly convinced that these formulas work better than anything I've tried in the past, bar none. Today, I'm a happy camper and really thankful that I've been introduced to these products. I'm impressed. And y'all have heard Steve before on the radio with me on the shows that I did. That was a while ago, too. You might want to try that again. Yeah, Steve's not uh, really. He did radio for many years. Well, years. there's other people, though. But I'm just saying. Yeah, it's not radio, but <laughs> he doesn't want to do it. Oh, Anyways, yeah, you get that every now and yeah, some people are shy, or they're just preoccupied, or something. Okay, so if anybody uh, goes on and buys it, please let me know so I know how much money I need to send Grim. Because that's that's a real offer, ten bucks. Anybody that orders a bottle of Swish on my site, let me know, and I will donate ten dollars to RLM. Hey, for every bottle sold. That's Ten Bones from Rob Works to Grimner's. Run the Real Liberty Media dot com secret account. So as of right now, yeah. Moose Girl uh, is uh, first one. There's ten dollars coming. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, and we're in Denmark, so we're really not available to participate at this point in time. Yeah, they, but they, they can't. Yet. I wouldn't hold you to nothing anyway right now. Just uh, when it comes around, we'll we'll deal with it when it comes. And I won't hold you to your little donation because it won't be well, February I, I, anymore. Whether it's during this month or any time. <laughs> and look at you. I, I'm so Jewish. I got him to extend the warranty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I would do that. Anyway. I, I mean, I know. I, I know that. I've talked, I've talked to Sir about I appreciate you guys putting up with me oh you know, yeah, yeah yeah but i mean i've talked to my wife about i've been known stuff. you for a long time on the on the chat so i've got my opinion of you robert don't give me trouble or i have to send you to your room <laughs> <Yeah>. anybody <laughs> what no first time only uh, yeah yeah order. first bottle there you go first bottle i will donate 10 anybody that does that through the chat room because of the for letting me Binge you guys' ears. Oh, shit. And you know what? Something I'll, that'll help. Well, it'll be worth it. But mm -hmm. sometimes help doesn't sound like help when you hear it. <laughs> and things that start out like shit, like me and Cirque did, 
Sometimes that works out for everybody in the long run. But you right. know, if you're going to base every moment, you know, if you're going to look at everything the same, you're going to lose a lot of opportunity. Because some things they look one way, and then Tuesday morning they look different. So yeah, yeah, shit. We're we're just people trying to survive this crap, Rob. That's all. Yep. And no, you know, and it's like the the link I was reading. I was going to do a one hour, and they go, ah, do two hours. So. Now I got you. Well, I'll I'll jump in and we can do an hour on. Yeah, but see, I'm not sick, so I really don't know what kind of. I can imagine that when I was ill, though, uh, what was wrong with me? I don't think there was anything that could have helped it but a surgeon, because it had been let go and misdiagnosed for so many years. Yeah. Well, it was in my 40s. I had come up with four fucking hernias, and they went, "Well, why didn't anybody tell me this before?" I mean, how do I? How do you grow up and become 40 odd years old, and not one fucking doctor you ever saw said, "Hey, you know you got four hernias." So my my faith in the medical system was shot out before I really even tried it. You know, so it was easy to push me away from it once I saw an escape. Or a problem come up I didn't want to fuck with. I said, Jit. So now, here I am, and I'm listening to you. I'm more interested in your stuff than I am in the uh, mainstream medical, big pharma okay. crap. You know, I've been disappointed by them before. So, hmm. Yep. I don't, uh, I haven't had the disappointment. I just avoided them altogether. i well, I haven't seen Java much, but I haven't seen him come on, on the site looking for you in any kind of negative way. So I would assume well, from what I, nice. what I read he, that he tried your stuff. About it. Huh? I said he wouldn't come after me. I sent him a free sample. So right, 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 right. But, I mean, that's what I mean is he had good things to say about it, and then I haven't yeah. seen him lately. Uh, unequivocally that, hey, it works. And then he's been taking... CBD oils for a long time already. Right, right. But I not this to... one. This And uh, this is better than all of them, according to him. Wow. Let's see. And I know, see, this is what I mean. When you know somebody, even online through a chat room for this amount of time, if Java tells me something, I believe him. Grim says the boost looks good for him. Uh, we've actually had people uh, the boost looks... overcome their addiction to energy drinks with that. Oh, 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 oh. From the... Okay, a lot, from the a lot of people are addicted to that Red Bull and Monsters and all that crap. Mm-mm. That shit's poison. Yeah, yeah, absolute crap. I know. People have broke their habits. They're, so they're it's... Energy. All right, but see here, we're stuck in that crap where they'll just justify it, but what isn't crap? So you kind of fuck, you know, no matter how... No matter what level you go to, the system thought of poisoning the fucking liner so that it it's yeah. slower, but it's within the legal confines of the law, so you know we can still use this poison to do the liner. <laughs> it's a trap, and we're 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 trapped in society. And and Rob's well, the way I see what Rob's doing is bringing us an alternative. This is what the people that I I associate with on this site for is we're all trapped in this freaking system that we, we have no opt-out or alternative to. So that's yeah, why I yeah, wanted to people. do this. I opt out of chemtrails. Hmm? <laughs> I'm sorry, go on about that. We got another We got another half hour where you can talk about any damn subject that makes you happy. This is still the dork table. I just wanted yeah. to, you know, give you a chance to, if you wanted it's to discuss it. Every discuss direction, it. You, got, you got food straight off as... Number one, I mean, 80% of this food in the store has got some kind of poison in it. Yeah, yeah. But it's within acceptable limits, like you said. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I learned that from the Galen Windsor links. It's fluoride and and chlorine and who knows, God knows what else. Um, The air itself is being sprayed. Uh, I mean, it's not that hard to figure out. No, but what they do is they write the legal limits. As far as in numbers, they make the, the uh, they make the maximum what should be the minimum. 
right? Instead of that being the lowest part, it's the highest part. And then they can, you know, they can kind of, they control it no matter what, because they've got that number range at their own discretion. And it should be at the very bottom, and they put it at the top because, well, it's within the legal confines. Yeah, at the most lethal level that you can fucking think of without just openly shooting people. Yeah. Well, right, well, but it does. I, it's not taken seriously, Rob, by a lot of folk. They think right. we're crazy. You asked about uh, all the things that uh, CBD oil is good for. Um, and Grimier brought up the boost, and now this girl said the serenity looks good to her. The, a lot of people are having... Um, well, you want to take a minute and describe what the boost is having for anxiety, the uh, here in the show. PTSD uh, are getting relief with the serenity product. Really? Wow. Uh, yeah. So, so yeah, we have four. We have four. Well, I guess you call sub products. Okay. They're both. They 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 have the CBD in it. The CBD CBG, but they have a specific blend of of herbs and nutraceuticals that are designed for these different specific purposes. We have the boost. We have the serenity. We have the relief, which is a pain reliever. Mm -hmm. Helps with pain, and then um, uh, what was the other one? Shit. Uh, well, but this sure. one product could be broken yeah. down into different components for different applications. God. That that's pretty unique, isn't it? Or is it like yeah. looking at it like a potato because you can eat a potato oh, a hundred yeah. different ways. It's still a potato. Yeah. There's a sleep. This. Uh, the sleep supposedly works really good. I haven't tried that yet. Ah, okay. So, but the one product brings on, you can mix it with different, like Mary and her oils. You, I've used peppermint oil on my neck when I had a, a headache coming on about a year ago. And Mary says, put two drops of peppermint, boom, boom. And I did that and it went away. Boom. And mit, just, I don't even think it was a minute. But it's that same principle where certain things are, uh, they go to certain parts of your body at a biological biological level that you don't control mentally. Hey, go to my left foot. No, that automatically goes right to your left foot because that's what these things are designed to do. Right? Or am I wrong? Basically. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> then you're explaining it in a way that even a bonehead like me can make sense out of it. So I appreciate that because some people confuse me with their bogus... Over explanation, you know, and it's it's so this and it's saying you just made it real simple to me. I don't Hang feel, on, me, yeah, I didn't, yeah, go ahead, but I didn't feel pitched uh, or anything. When I just listen, you're uh, you're making this very easy for me, Rob. I appreciate it. Right. Okay. Dork Cakes um, is asking why does this need my birthday and social security number? If you go in and hit the join button, that means you're joining the company. You're, you're becoming an independent distributor, uh, and you can get paid. Um, if you send somebody to your website and they order a bottle of Swish, you get paid. They report it. It's the this is a, a legitimate business. It's yeah, by the confines of the freedom of our laws. Yeah, look, they're not gonna, they're not going to do anything. You know, there's, there's no hokey bullshit going on here. So. That just like if you went and got a job, they need your birthday, your social security number, and a whole lot more. Um, uh, that being said, uh, the company doesn't take out taxes. They're your responsibility. They'll send you a 1099. That's it. And the taxes, are, they're on you. You want to pay them, that's fine. You don't, that's fine too. That's up to you. And not a lot of people know all that, the secret truth about that. I was, it was in that Lysander Spooner link I was reading. It's one of the ties to the uh, contract is yeah, the voting taxes. and paying taxes. Yeah, and this whole thing back in 1988. I, this is what I started. I joined a group called the uh, the Liberty Foundation, mm -hmm. um, and they had an untaxed program. And uh, uh, we actually sold a package for like two thousand dollars to learn how to stop paying income taxes 
<laughs> and yeah, no shit. Wow, oh, you crook. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, no, I never sold any, but the, anyways, um, so the 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 biggest part of the income tax thing is just having the balls to say fuck you. Okay, pretty much. Yeah, that's what I believe. Yeah. The court stuff, you know, like the traffic stuff, like Eddie Craig came on and talked about, you know. It's not about having all your eyes dotted and your teeth crossed and having the magic little phrase to say or whatever. It's about being the belligerent motherfucker that gets up there and says, fuck you people. I ain't bending over and taking it. <laughs> yeah, because you're bound to their little fantasy the minute you walk in. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> playing your game. I'm not bound to legalese bullshit. I don't consent. Yeah. To legally being used, and it's all set up to tie you up and molester you as a as a victim in their court. It's very it's very disgraceful what this truly is. I'm I wouldn't be proud of it. Right, I wouldn't. I I'm not. So it's like wow. But it ain't no different than the one I'm in. It's just the loose, you know, loose rope, barbed wire theory. And it's the same shit. It's just not as pushy and, you know, confining. But if the population got big, it would be. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't want to become a member, uh, don't use the join button. Use the order button. There you go. That solved that whole. Yeah, I I thought thought of that right away. I just didn't say anything. But. Uh, also, at the same time, uh, if you're just ordering, you're paying retail. I feel so smart. I'm you smart. can become a member and buy at wholesale, and you don't have to do anything. You don't have to promote the business. You don't have you don't have to do anything you don't want to do. Yeah, there you go. You can swish for fifty five dollars a bottle, wholesale. And put it on auto ship. You get a free bottle of spray with it every month, and forget about it if that's what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Or you can. Same thing on the order side, only you're going to pay $80 a bottle instead of 55 Now, I don't just tell everybody that, but. <laughs> well, you should. Not not in that cut and drag kind of way. I mean. Well, yeah, but, but secrecy yeah, kind of fucks us all up. You can get your swish for $55 by joining and giving up your birthday and your social security number. Oh, uh, yeah, there you uh, go. Yeah. But if they, you can never send you any money, um you don't have anything to worry about as far as paying taxes goes. <laughs> Mike, SLC Mike's being a funny guy in the chat. Yeah. Oh, He's boy. <laughs> but anyway. anyway. Yeah, but whatever. However you want to deal with the tax situation, that is that is not for me to say. Um, and the company has the same philosophy. Uh, they're going to send out a 1099. Yeah. And what you do with it's it your is your business. Early up to you. And right. And if people would just really That's understood right. that is fuck it. <laughs> they they only come looking for you if you've applied to them for their approval. If you've never applied to them, they don't even know you're there. So the right. company that you work for can give you documents up the ass, but if you never sign them, there's no contract. Right. On the other hand, if you want to join the business mm -hmm. and actually work it as a business like I'm doing. Oh yeah. Because you're yeah. But I'm a rebel, Rob. Full disclosure is uh, that's the reason some some of you went on and noticed that there's another name mm. when you click on order. Another name shows up on the right instead of Rob Works. It's got my picture, but it has my girlfriend's name up there. That's because I don't put my social security number on things either. <laughs> oh, so, what an in clandestine. Life we live. Yeah, um, I'm, I, I know. I did it. I know. I know. Money. Exactly. You know, she, yeah, this game is financial trap. and the state side of things, and I, I do the work. But this you know? this game is so I don't know. Everybody's got their own interpretation. I mind my business. I ain't gonna judge you, Rob Edson. My fucking business. My business would be I I ask you for something or and you tell me it costs this much money and I get it. That's all I'd be concerned with. <laughs> Y'all are all free to judge me. Oh, you like it. <laughs> <laughs> and they all suck. Hey, you still got that picture that Cirque did for your T-shirt? I do somewhere, Barry. You should make. Well, I ever bring up another one. You get a T-shirt made of that. 
with your with yeah your R yeah that's the RLM and Rob works. <laughs> I think yeah I say, oh, it'd be nice if somebody gave it to me as a Christmas present or something. Oh okay. Oh, I see how you are. I, I, yeah, I just, I don't. <laughs> it's just, and we whenever I see the the and and they all suck. I always think about the cartoon. I'm an artist at heart, I guess, deep down inside. Can't let go of my little childish cartoons. Is what's hypocritical, Miss Girl? Uh oh, what's going uh, on? My girlfriend, uh, do the <laughs> did I mute? You're muted. I'm muted now. Oh, okay. Yeah. I no, thought, not. yeah, I thought it went the wrong way. I was trying to cough. Oops. Sorry, guys. Been uh, that, smoking that, a little bit tonight. Isn't that a bit hypocritical? And I'm, I'm assuming she's talking about how you, how my girlfriend. Yeah, probably. I would assume. Right of it. But, yeah, I can say it is. But so um, what? Who cares? It's her choice. You know, she's a a willing uh, statist. She's but but we're, her, we uh, it's her, we're the two of us. You're not two people you would expect to ever see together. She is she is a hundred percent sheeple, and she admits it. She she's proud of it. So oh, so like Cirque. Cirque is just dang. There's no there's no other way for her. Look, non rule breaking, nothing. She she doesn't yep. she. Exactly. Yeah. So, Cause, and that's yeah. how she is. That's how you know she. That's the way she would be, whether I was here or not. So. So yeah, it just works for us. It's a synergistic situation for us. Yeah, man. Are. You don't got to explain anything to me, man. I know all about life, the universe, and everything. Uh, so I mean, yeah. I even know what the answer is. I don't. Uh, I don't have a problem explaining it. it like I said, I mean, you can judge me all you want. I don't give a fuck. No, I, I realize that because it's it's all in your head any damn way. Yeah. It just it when you get these mental bonds to people and they say something mean to you, then you feel slapped. So it's all in your head because just type on a screen. It really isn't what it seems. You know, that's why uh, that's why I interpret things the way I like to, you know, the way I see them. <laughs> Not necessarily the way that you tell me they are, and you wrote them. <laughs> I see what I want. I'm insane, fucker. <laughs> Don't you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, are you a big... You're not a big rule follower. I know that much about you, but there's a I'm part... I'm own rules. Yeah, no, but they're, they're still... You're compliant to a degree. You're social. You're not an animal. You You don't behave like an idiot in the world. You're sensible. Well, yeah. All I'm saying is that uh, some of us, the hermits and the and the outside the you know the rules players, we still have a decorum about us. We carry ourselves well in society. You know, <laughs> we're we're not the weirdos that we are on the internet in real life. We have no respect for the laws created by a group of assholes up in a. In a building years ago, trying to save their own ass, they weren't worried about us. You know, I don't, I, that has nothing to do with my respect for my fellow man and human being. Right. And right. Yeah. Having a code of ethics to, to to live by in the world. Yeah, like give a give an explanation of that's, something that's simple that that would cover for the slower people, because some people don't understand what ethics fucking are. It's your moral code. It's it's what you're okay judged by the society that you're, you're in. Or what? That you're not willing to cross to further your own ends. It's oh like, yeah, I'm with if you. I didn't, I didn't have the moral compass that I do, I'd be a rich motherfucker right now because <sighs> yeah. I'd be one of these guys that are out there raping everybody and, and ripping people off and yeah, selling, selling snake oil. You can become a mercenary for a fee. And they don't want what, what do they want? ID? Are you nuts? They're killing people for money. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So oh, what, yeah. it's not that hard. You know, and, and, and there's there's the reality of traveling to international waters. If you get caught out there, 
right? There's the other side of it. You could get away with it, but if you don't sign anything and you get caught in international water without ID, they'll take you. Yeah. Whatever country pulls you will has that right to just take you away. So we've been trained and caught in this paper game, Rob. <laughs> it's, it's beautiful. I wish I would have thought of it. But it was already here when I was born. Yeah, it was here hundreds of years before. I you. wasn't born in the right family. Yeah. Don't you know? And people laugh at me when I tell them that. But if you want to look at it that way, or maybe you were. <laughs> well, right, yeah. But I'm saying to be a successful warmonger, crooked piece of shit, I was born in the wrong family for that. Yeah, I kind of said some stuff in the chat room the other day. Yeah. Well, that. Right. About how they how the elite train their children. Hmm. How and, and how? Okay, from the age of five. Then I've read this is something I read, and hmm. you can take do whatever with it, whatever hmm. you want. But the story I got was uh, at five years of age, they put them in a cage, and they come by every day and they strangle a cat in front of them. Oh yeah, I've I've heard this, yeah. and until you stop reacting. And so once once you've been calloused to that act of having that cat killed in front of you, then they start making you kill the cat. Right. The progression. Right. Twist and break your neck. Twist and break and make them. And and it's 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 called traumatic mind control compartmentalization. So every time one of these next stronger traumatic event happens, it creates a break in your mind. Mm-hmm. How they do these compartmentalized? That's what. That's how people are are driven to uh, multiple personality. Well, that's how I see the movie like in their yeah. life. Yeah, that's so static. Bury it all on uh, behind a barrier, <laughs> and they a whole different person. Yeah, yeah. Every once in a while, this other person comes out. Yeah. So what they've done is they've taken all that into a science. At Montauk and other uh, MK Ultra and all that stuff, wow. yeah. and they've and they've taken those that process and they've figured out a way to program people to access certain personalities based on certain trigger words. Hmm. And so that's so that's some of what happens to some of the elite's children. So when you say you were born into the wrong family, don't be so sure. <laughs> Financially. Well, what I mean yeah. is is the true wealth, that, that Trump crap wealth that we're, we're all you know stunned and amazed at looking upon because these people are wealthy. Uh, yeah. I don't know, because I've read similar things about it, and I've seen the results all my life of their good work. And it seems to me that it's... It's nothing. No, well, there's, 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 gone all the time. there's no in, what? by a nanny or some shit. Yeah, but beside that, as adults, there's no investment back into the world that we live in that isn't just hell bent on making some kind of profit. So nobody creates anything worth fucking having hardly anymore. And then, well, I'm coming to the end of the show here. But then you pop up with this, hey, look what I found. You're not gonna fucking believe it. There you go. And yeah. I really appreciate because it's been, I've asked you to come on the door table a couple of times and you've turned it down. I really didn't have a microphone problem last time. I, I figured you probably had a feeling I was just blowing it up, but it really was not working. But no, no, no. I believe you. But if you get the urge and you feel like doing anything on the uh, door table, feel free to give me a bell. You know, you're, you're welcome to stop by and pitch your snake oil any fucking time you like. Awesome. I just wanted to let you know that because we got uh, I got five minutes left here on my clock, so I yeah. don't yeah I didn't want to get ta- caught in the middle of talking about something at the end and forget because I usually forget what time it is. Well, I appreciate you letting me come on. Oh no 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 that oh, yeah, cool. let me. Yeah. well I you know I give what I get Rob and you know some people just I'm a very sensitive kind of person. You know, and uh, I don't think I go out striking at folk, but who knows? 
So I don't know. You just your sarcasm, I take it lightly for some reason. So whatever you say to me, it doesn't bug me. Other people, well, you know, I, I take them a little more seriously, I guess. We've got a time have a a repertoire of or not a repertoire uh, rapport. You know that uh, you know I'm not seriously ever talking shit to her about you. <laughs> no, no, yeah, not. But that's a, yeah, yeah, it's because sarcastic and yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah, but we already had that that set. It was like a, a yeah, it was like an unwritten work. kind of thing. We figured out. Well, yeah, but it's a commune thing. You either you know it or you don't. And some people don't. And I I don't know. I click with some and not with others. That's the balance of life. You know, just you can't expect you know gold out of everything. <laughs> yeah. So well. Hmm. I uh, I get opinionated. Um, I like to think I'm pretty good at reading people. Yeah. And as you'll notice, certain people come in, like the Soffit, I don't even say his name. Um, <laughs> most people get under my skin really bad. Well, okay? that's personalities, Rob. That, I'm the same fucking way, too. And they... Twist shit around. And, and <laughs> it's a word game. Have fun. It pisses me off, and they think they really got something, and they, you know they're mm-hmm. just. And that was the point of the Lysander Spooner in the first place tonight, guys and gals out there in uh, Radio Lane, was the, the way that we're told shit, as opposed to the way it truly is. And we'll have to pick up this. So you want to come back next week and. Yak about the Lysander Spooner or your stuff. You're welcome to it. Uh, but start coming every Saturday. I don't. Know. Yeah, you can. You can do that. Don't you, hold me to that. You don't even need. I, you don't even need to be licensed or bonded. Oh, sweet. Yeah, I don't think your parole officer is going to really care what you do. <laughs> yeah, your parole officer. I'm going to start rumors now. Don't I'm going to be a rumor mill. Not in 20 years, anyway. Anyway, uh, what we get? Okay, thanks a lot, Rob. I'm going to close it now. Okay. Thanks a lot, Rob, for uh, coming on to the Dork Table and the Not Serious yeah, Show. Thanks for and, having me. And well, yeah, and try to you know give somebody an opportunity to see something that might help them. And as we all know, we're in the fiat currency world. It's a pay for play kind of life. Don't blame Rob. It's not his fault. <laughs> but. Uh, well, you know, to those that don't, I don't give a fuck. Right, but some people, you know, some people don't have enough, you know. And I don't yeah. know how many of them listen to the show. Maybe we we might be lucky and have a rich audience, but who knows? Yeah, I'm not holding my breath on that one. But life is really financially, life is really fucked right now for a lot of people. And, I think you know, and for the folks that are fortunate enough to be able to. Uh, Buy a little extra something to keep their ass a little healthier. They're freaking lucky, and uh, we get the we get the opportunity to talk about it like a couple of dorks on the dork table and see what happens. Yeah. So we've got coming up on the reallibertymedia.com. dot uh, com tomorrow Sunday will be Grimnir in the morning comes on with the blues and then he kicks our ass at trivia for three hours. And we all call him names and tell him, I hope you break a finger and slow down a little bit. <laughs> and we do, we, we do that till Hal Anthony comes around. And Hal gets his can of whoop ass out. And he does. Uh, thanks, everybody. Oh, yeah, Rob. Thanks. Thanks so much. Appreciate that. And then yeah. uh, Hal Anthony does behind, behind the woodshed. And Monday night, you got Grimm's Leftovers, and that's the stuff he didn't finish on Freaker's Ball Friday night. And then Tuesday, I come back. Sometimes I do alone. Sometimes I got married. Sometimes I don't know. We'll see. Life is getting interesting. But uh, good wishes out to Vincent. I hope you get well soon. It's a mother of uh, uh, to be hospitalized. I've been there. I did not, did not like it. So, you know. And... Stay active, get fucking walking as soon as possible, and you know, don't push yourself till you can't do it. Just keep busy and try to beat this shit and all like that. And then we got uh, Wednesday, we've got Vinny's friend Lonnie Clark came over, and she does uh, a show in the afternoon on Wednesday. 
I'm forgetting the times. So open a schedule for the proper times. But Thursday, we've got the Power Hour with um, Prince and z Picks and Rotten Socks. And then, uh, I don't think... Okay, then Friday, we got the Freaker's Ball with Grim and Moose or Balls to the Wall with Grim Solo. Depending on if she's going uh, out listening to music. And I thought he said she was next week. I do this wrong sometimes, so sorry, guys. But uh, thanks a lot for listening, and over and out.